Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. Did you look here? And today's capsule summary is a novel, which is a suspense novel. It is called The Woman in White. Published serially from 1859 to 1860 in all the year round. You know what is all the year round, right? The literary magazine, journal, which was founded by our Charles Dickens. Yes, and Charles Dickens and Wiki Collins, who is the author of The Woman in White. They were very good friends. Okay, so this way, Wiki Collins' novel, that is The Woman in White, was serially published in all the year round. In UK and in US, it was serially published in Harper's Weekly. Whereas in book form, The Woman in White came in the year 1860. Author I told you is William Wiki Collins, a British author who lived from 1824 to 1889. The genre of Woman in White is, it's a sensation novel or a mystery novel or a detective fiction, also a social novel. It critiques the society of the Victorian era, how it treats the mentally ill, how it treats the women, that is what will be discussed. Protagonist is a man called Walter Hartwright. He's an arts teacher. And narrator is, basically, there is multiple narration going on in The Woman in White. Vicky Collins himself wrote in the preamble, quote, The story here presented will be told by more than one pen, as the story of an offense against the laws is told in court by more than one witness. Easy. Point of view is, first person and also you must know it is an epistolary novel that is a novel told through a series of letters or documents setting of the woman in white is primarily England in England there will be London Cumberland Hampshire then another setting will be Italy and a very you know short span setting will be Paris okay year 1849 to 1850 okay let's start with the woman in white Walter Hart Wright lives in London. He is a drawing teacher, a self-made Victorian era man. Walter Hart Wright is very intelligent and generous. Yes, such a nice combination, no, of intelligence and generosity. He's like that everyman character. What is an everyman character? A prototype of uh, generosity and intelligence. Yes. So, Walter Hart Wright, can you understand from his surname only? His heart lies at the right place. Okay? So, Walter Hart Wright, on the advice of his friend, Professor Pesca, he agrees to take up the job of an art teacher at the Limeridge House in Cumberland. Primarily, he's living in London. He is a little hesitant to go to Cumberland for his job, but he needs money, of course. So, on the advice of his friend Pesca, he agrees to take this job at Limeridge House. Okay, so this is like his last night in London. He goes to visit his mother and his sister, Sarah. Okay, while walking back home, this is very important. Walter Hartwright meets a mysterious woman walking alone on the streets, dressed completely in white. You know, even I should have dressed in white today. I'm sorry. From next time, I'll take care. <laughs> okay. I have a little bit of white in this sweater. So just understand Walter Hartwright is walking back home. He meets this very strange and mysterious woman who is from, you know, head to bottom dressed in white. This theme, suspense. The theme is suspense. This strange white-dressed woman asks Hartwright the way to London and walks with him to the city. The two of them walk together and while on the way, the woman tells Walter about a certain baronet. She's again and again saying, baronet, I know his secret, baronet, that's it, okay? Walter tells her that, you know, he's an art teacher and he's about to take up a new job at Limeridge House. Oh, the woman in white starts smiling listening about Limeridge House. She used to stay very close to Limeridge House. She, in fact, knew an occupant of this house, the late and the kind Mrs. Fairley. Okay, here the connection between Limeridge House and this woman in white begins. Okay, soon Walter helps this woman get a cab and she drives off. But later he discovers from a man that this woman in white is indeed a mad woman who has recently escaped from an asylum. 
ये लड़की पागल खाने से भाग निकली है एंड वॉल्टर एक्चुअली हेल्प हिम गेट अल्प हर गेट अ कैब सो वॉल्टर इज वेरी क्वाइट ओके वेन द पुलिस मैन इज नियर बाय he says he knows nothing he moves away next day he begins his journey to the limeridge house okay so the setting from london changes to cumberland limeridge house frederick fairly is the owner of limeridge house frederick fairly is a proud and self absorbed man who cares less for his family he treats his servants rudely frederick fairly is a wealthy hypochondriac land owner hypochondriac means when you seriously feel feel that you are ill if i will feel oh god i have this serious disease serious disease i am hypochondriac so frederick fairly was a hypochondriac frederick is the uncle of laura fairly ye hamari heroine hai remember her name laura fairly and her half sister marian halcombe so laura and marian are half sisters Marian is elder Laura is younger Marian loves Laura okay they are more than sisters half sister forget they are more than sisters so now who is Laura Laura is the daughter of Frederick Fairley's late brother Philip Fairley so aap maan lo Frederick Fairley is Laura's uncle chacha hindi mein bole to Walter Hartright has been hired as an art tutor for these two girls precisely he is going to train laura and marian in drawing art painting etc now listen about the character sketch of these two girls laura is a thoughtful slightly timid girl whereas her half sister marian is very outspoken she is in fact considered to be the finest you know caricature in victorian era novels you know by many critics marian is intelligent she is not beautiful but so what she has that brain she has sixth sense she can sense what is going on in people's mind but on the contrary laura is like beautiful simple she remains in her world of art and beauty yes so walter and marian over the course of few days and months they become good friends who walter and marian whereas as time passes walter and laura become lovers yes love happens between walter hartright and laura fairly because both of them have a common ground of art and beauty here the theme is similarity right if our natures match of course we will like each other if you know you and i match on many levels i'll say oh oh i like him i like her our views are similar right so one thing that walter finds very very striking is he finds a strong resemblance between laura and the woman he met on the streets of london that is the woman in white so when walter tells this to marian that i met this girl you know in london she was dressed in white she looks like laura marian quickly goes through her late mother's letters and from these letters she reveals to walter that this girl in white is indeed ann catherick a girl who stayed very near limeridge house a girl who was very close to their mother mrs fairly basically mrs fairly was a teacher so in that school ann would study and mrs fairly loved ann she would give her white clothes to wear and that is how ann got those white clothes okay easy to hear right now let's come back to the love affair of walter and laura although they are madly in love with each other but walter and laura's love affair does not blossom because laura is engaged to marry a baronet named sir percival glide why did i shout at the word baronet can you connect it with the woman in white who had said baronet baronet everything will come everything will form together just listen so heartbroken walter leaves limeridge house because he knows that sir parsival glide the fiance of laura is expected to arrive soon here let's begin with laura fairly and sir parsival glide's wedding laura is sad because she loves walter hartright but she had made a promise to her you know father at his death bed that i will marry this rich baronet who sir parsival here the theme is gender of course how a woman was forced to marry at that time can be considered true even today right gender how a woman you know if she is given a promise she has to keep up to that promise however before marriage laura shows an anonymous letter to marian 
this unknown writer of the letter warns Laura not to marry Sir Parsival. So, you know, after receiving this letter, Marianne and Walter, like detectives, they move around the village trying to find out that who wrote this letter, who wrote this letter. And finally, Walter finds out that it is the woman in white, the one who was in London. She's come to Cumberland. She keeps on coming to Cumberland. She keeps on visiting Mrs. Fairley's grave. She is the one who has written this anonymous letter to Laura, telling her not to marry Sir Parsival. Oh, ho. Nonetheless, the marriage does take place. Walter, heartbroken, returns to London. Marianne's sense of judgment allows her to see Sir Parsival's alleged nobility, which means that Sir Parsival is very charming and noble on the face. But Marianne feels that Sir Parsival is deceitful and is hiding something dark secret. Okay, And also, Laura's friendly dog always barks at Sir Parsival. So Marianne has this sense about Sir Parsival that he is not a correct man and not a correct match for her sister. But the marriage has happened. Okay, So despite all this, Laura and Sir Parsival become husband and wife in December 1849. But after the marriage... The lawyer of Laura, you know, Mr. Gilmore, on saying of Sir Parsival, on the orders of Sir Parsival, makes a marriage settlement. According to this marriage settlement, if Laura dies without an heir, if Laura has an affair, anything, Sir Parsival would become the heir of Limeridge House because Laura would become the heir of Limeridge House after Mr. Fairley dies. This you should know. So now Laura's husband would become the heir of Limeridge House if she dies, if she does not have an heir, if she has an affair. And also Sir Parsival would receive £20,000, which was quite an amount during that time. Easy. Let's move to the honeymoon of Laura and Sir Parsival, which happened in Italy. And they were in Italy for a good six months where they were accompanied by, you should know, Laura's aunt, basically Laura's papa's sister. Okay, her name is Countess Fosco and Countess Fosco's husband, Count Fosco. Count Fosco is the closest friend of Sir Parsival. He is a fat Italian man with a mysterious past. And I have to tell you, I will not keep any suspense here. The primary villain of this novel is Count Fosco. Of course, Sir Parsival also is. But Count Fosco is very intelligent and very, very maneuvering. So remember these two villains in The Woman in White, Count Fosco and Sir Parsival, they are very good friends. So after spending six months in Italy, Laura, Sir Parsival return to England and they go to Sir Parsival's estate at Blackwater, Blackwater, okay, in Hampshire. And they are also accompanied by Count Fosco and Countess Fosco. Here, Marianne comes to stay with them. So now how many people in all, all the important people here, Laura, Sir Parsival, Count Fosco, Countess Fosco and Marianne. They all stay at Blackwater, which is the estate of Sir Parsival. Months pass, Marianne and Laura develop a very strong dislike for, Sir, for Count Fosco. You know, they feel Count Fosco is a cunning man. Marianne senses that Count Fosco is plotting something against them. Moreover, Sir Parsival's noble nature changes. He becomes ill-tempered towards his wife, Laura. Here the theme is appearance versus reality. Just few months back, Sir Parsival's appearance was noble and gentle. And now the reality is striking. He's become this ill-mannered man. One day, Laura meets Anne Catherick around her house and followed them in Cumberland and followed them in Hampshire and has been following Laura. The woman in white has been following Laura and is now terminally ill, which means she has very few days to, le to live. Okay. And who is terminally ill by now has been following Laura secretly along with her servant, Mrs. Clements. Remember, Anne is the one who has run away from the mental asylum. She's a mad woman. Yeah, that is what everyone says. She's a mad woman. We don't know for sure. We'll come to know. So Anne follows Laura with her servant, Mrs. Clements. Anne tells Laura she knows a secret about Sir Parsival, but they cannot talk just then. They decide they will meet the next day. Sir Parsival comes to know about this and he quickly locks Laura in her room, forces her to sign an undisclosed document. This document is basically Sir Parsival should be allowed to use those 20,000 pounds of money. But, 
you know, Laura refuses to sign this document, right? After this, Count Fosco and Sir Parsival start plotting something. And when they are plotting, Marianne overhears them. Listen, one night Marianne overhears Sir Parsival and Count Fosco talking in the garden. They are planning to kill Laura. Reason? So that Parsival receives all her inheritance. Marianne is scared. She gets ill with typhus because when she was hiding, she got completely soaked in the rain. So the servants and Laura are told that Marianne is sent back to Limeridge because she has become ill. Now, the devilish plan of Count Fosco and Sir Parsival. Listen, the two men are desperately hunting for the woman in white, that is Anne Catherick. Along with that, Sir Parsival tells all the servants in his house to leave. But the major servant, that is Mrs. Michelson, the major housekeeper at Blackwater, she's told that Marianne has left for Limeridge due to her illness and she should take Laura to the railway station the next day because Laura is also supposed to go to Limeridge. So Mrs. Michelson follows. When Mrs. Michelson returns from the railway station, leaving Laura for Limeridge house, she finds Marianne still at Blackwater. Mrs. Michelson is scared. She's sure that Sir Parsival is plotting something bad against the sisters. Right? When Laura gets to London, she's taken to stay at Count Fosco's house. But next day, everybody is told that Laura is dead. Laura has died from heart failure. And this is the story that Sir Parsival and Count Fosco has fabricated. Marianne is devastated. Her half-sister, her love is dead, but she's determined to find the truth. So after months, Marianne goes to visit Anne. Anne, because Anne has again been captured and taken to the mental asylum. So Marianne goes to visit Anne at the mental asylum to know the secret about Sir Parsival. Because remember, Anne was telling Laura, I have a secret about Sir Parsival. I have a secret about Sir Parsival. Marianne has gone to Anne. Laura is dead. Climax in the story. Jitna bhi maine bola, wo kuch bhi sach nahi tha. Listen to the such now. Listen to the truth now. At the mental asylum, when Marianne meets Anne, she is shocked. She discovers that this woman is not Anne. This woman is Laura, her half-sister. It is Laura who has been thrown in the asylum in the place of Anne. Here the theme is exchange of identities. Remember, there's a strong resemblance in the faces of Anne and Laura. Remember? Marianne bribes a nurse at the mental asylum. She helps in, you know, the escape of her sister, Laura, takes her back to Limeridge. But at Limeridge, everyone feels that Laura is dead. So Laura is confused with this identity crisis of hers. And one day, the two sisters meet Walter Hartwright. Yes, the three of them meet and the three of them now want to find the truth. Okay. They know that the person at the grave, you know, where Walter was praying. Walter was praying at Laura's grave. So the two sisters say, no, no, Laura says, I am alive. This person who is lying dead there, you know, in my place, that is somebody else. So now Walter and Marianne, they are determined to find the truth. And because of their hard work, because of their detective nature, everything in the novel comes clear. So at the end of The Woman in White, understand the revelations. The truths, let's begin. First, Sir Parsival Glyde was an alleged child because his parents were never married to each other. He is an alleged child as well as a fortune hunter. He has amassed great debt upon himself. So he secretly forged his parents' marriage certificate to give himself the false title of the Baronet of Blackwater. He was alleged he could never have got the title of baronet, but he forged the certificates in the church. Okay. Second, he got the key. That is, Sir Parsival got the key to the vestry of the church. Vestry is like an attached building to the church from Anne's greedy mother, Mrs. Jan Catherick. A new person enters here, Mrs. Jan Catherick, who is Anne's greedy mother, a very unpleasant character in the story. Anne's mother had an affair with Laura's father, Mrs. Mr. Philip Fairley. And this is how Laura and Anne are sisters. Right? Their father is the same. Understood? They are half-sisters. Mrs. Catherick helped Parsival get 
access to the church register so that he could forge the certificate of his parents in return for a gold watch and an annual payment. She, in fact, this way helped in throwing her own daughter in the mental asylum. Next revolution in the story that Walter helped find out, Mrs. Fairley was kind-hearted towards Anne because she looked just like her own daughter, Laura. Of course, they are from the same father. Next revolution, Percival has run up enormous debts and seeks to repay them by marrying Laura and claiming her inheritance, even if this means murdering her or throwing her in a mental asylum. Here the theme is unequal position of married women in Victorian era laws. Next revolution, Count Fosco and Sir Percival were involved in exchanging the identities of Laura and Anne. Anne died at Count Fosco's house, but Laura was taken to the mental asylum and Anne was buried in place of Laura. Understood now? Everything easy? Next. It was indeed Anne who died at Count Fosco's house in London, as I told you. And next, Laura was forcibly sent to the asylum in place of Anne. Dead Anne. Dead woman in white. At the end of the novel, Sir Parsival causes his own death. Yes, Sir Parsival is killed. How? By trying to set the church on fire. Remember, he had forged the certificate of his parents, made a fake marriage certificate. He wanted to destroy these documents so that Walter could never get his hands on them. In, you know, trying to destroy these documents, he destroyed himself. He caused the fire at the church, which killed him. Then Mrs. Catherick writes a letter to Walter to tell him that Anne never knew any secret about Sir Parsival. All she would say that I know a secret about Sir Parsival, but she never knew any secret. Sir Parsival logged her in the asylum just in case she did know the truth. And in the midst of all this chaos and confusion, Walter and Laura marry. Sir Parsival is dead, remember? So Walter and Laura marry. While Count Fosco flees London, he goes to Paris. So now let's change the setting from London to Paris, England to Paris, actually. A few months later, Walter gets a job which takes him to Paris. While walking on the street, passing a museum, he sees a dead body. Whose dead body it is? Count Fosco. Count Fosco was killed by an agent of the in Italian Nationalist Secret Society, whom he had betrayed, of whom Professor Pesca is an imminent member. Remember Professor Pesca, Walter's friend? Oh God. And at the end of the story, Walter and Laura have a son together. And when Mr. Fairley dies, they move to Limeridge House and Walter's son becomes heir to the property. So who the Limeridge House belongs to now? Walter and Laura's son. Yes, nice. Did you like it? With this few points to ponder in The Woman in White, Collins' novels chronologically, understand, first Antonio, next The Woman in White, next The Moonstone, very important novels of Collins. Collins' tombstone is dedicated to, quote, the author of The Woman in White. And last point to ponder, the Woman in White is an epistolary style novel, as I told you. It combines different points of view and compiles it as though it is a series of documents. With this, the characters, I have written them. You know the names of the characters. Very easy. And we are done with The Woman in White. I liked it. Yes. You know, this novel set forth the direction of the detective novels. Yes. If you loved it, kindly comment down. This is Hina from Team Wallach. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.